Hi everyone, today I'm going to be showing you the configuration of a CMMT drive with IO control. With IO control, we can use digital inputs or analog inputs to control basic movements on a CMMT drive. Similar to our simplified motion series or a normal pneumatic actuator where you can have very simple logic to control them, we have access to more parameters on our CMMT drives that make this additional functionality very beneficial. First, let's look at the hardware. I'm using a CMMT-AS drive with a network connection in my X18 port. This is going through a network switch to my computer for configuration and FESO automation suite. I'll show you later how I wired this above with 120 volts AC, as well as a 20 volt power supply used for my logic. I'm using a FESO servo connected to a FESO linear actuator. This is a two felt axis that has a stroke of 200 millimeters. I also have this custom board here with a toggle switch so I can enable the motor, two digital inputs, as well as the dial that's just a potentiometer so I can have a analog signal for this. Now let's open Tesla Automation Suite so I can import my archive file. The description of this video will have a link so you can download the archive. On the start page, I'm going to import, project archive, browse for it, Select it here. Notice the description will give you some information about how to use this. Open it. I'll save the file. Since I already have this file saved, it's going to ask me that, do I want to override it? And I will. Open the file. Now notice here that there's two different drives set up. And this is very important for whichever drive type you're using. For this project, I'm going to use a CMMT-AS servo, so I'm going to double-click on this one. Before connecting to your drive, you want to make sure that you change all these settings, as well as anything else that applies to your application. Although some parameters are set in the archive, we'll want to make sure under parameter list, if you search 1023, there's three different parameters we want to make sure we have set. First, this one, controller enable selection. We'll make sure it's set to IO. This is the value I recommend. Controller enable operating mode. We'll make sure this is set to start record table, although originally it's set to position. And then you also want to make sure this index for controller enable is set to one, although there's an exception that I'll describe later in this video why you may want to change this value. Now go back to drive configuration. Where my drive is factory reset right now, I'm going to make sure that I have a right path selected. I'm going to add that here. And then I'm going to connect. I'm going to write to my device. Initially this will be errored out, but I can store the current parameters onto the drive. Then I can reinitialize. And then I'm going to acknowledge the errors. Now I want to show you how I wire this. Under diagnosis, an IO state, you will see a live view of the state of the IO connector. These four pins are for my safety signals. So right now I have 20 volts to each of these pins. I do not currently have it set up, but I can have a error reset button so I can reset any errors on the drive. I have a toggle switch with 20 volts wired on one end. So this can control enable pin, which is pin three here. Pins one and two are for my analog input which are only necessary if you're running an analog control. And this will be my minus 10 to positive 10 volt connection. And here's a common for my DC for reference. On this side here, I have cap zero and cap one, which are my two momentary push buttons for my retract and extend signals. On one end, I have 20 volts, and now I'll feed 20 volts directly to each of these pins when I request. Now I can show you how this IO control is set up. From parameterization, go under axis, record table, and this will show you the exact flow of how IO control works. Starting with record one, where it navigates based on the status of the homing value. If your homing is valid, then it will move directly to your control type that you desire. In this case right now, it's set up as 60. If your homing is not valid, then it's going to step to record two, which is going to automatically home your motor. With this pencil to the right, I can edit that. I'm going to leave it as actual position for now. 
but you can change for your application. Let's say you want to home every single time the motor is enabled. What you can do is under parameter list, you can search for index. In this index for controller enable. This is set to one for this program, but if I change it to two, this will make it so that the motor will home every single time it's enabled. Let's go back to the record table. In this transition, you can edit which control type you want to move to. If I set to 10, this will change to my point to point control. The other options are point to fix stop, bi directional jog, analog position, analog torque, and analog velocity. Let's first look at point to point control. So, under the transition for record one, I'll make sure this is set to 10. And then under this section, I have a retract point and an extend point. Here I can define positions, velocities, accelerations, accelerations, which can be different for each of the two positions. So now I'll show this on my device. Now I'll show under diagnosis the IO state as I move. So you'll see the values here. I'll turn the motor on. I have an input to retract and input to extend. Now let's take a look at point to fixed stop. Back to the record table. In record one, I can change the transition to 20. In this section, you'll notice a retract point, same as last time. But now I have two different records. I have a fixed stop parameter and a fixed stop move. In the parameter, I can define the maximum torque that the axis will output before considering move complete. So this can be used for holding position. In the move, I can define target position, which will be the maximum position that the axis will move to before searching for the torque being exerted. Now I can store this on the device. Go back to diagnosis so I can view the inputs here. And you'll also notice the current torque being exerted here. I'll turn the motor on. I have an input for my retract to a point and an input for my extend to a fixed stop. Notice the spring I have here. This will not reach the full 40 millimeter stroke and it will reach the maximum torque due to this spring. Retract and extend. Next, I can demonstrate bi directional jog. Back to the record table. I'll change this to 30. In this section, I'm going to use the same fixed stop parameter and move, but for the intention of just jogging. So in this way, I can find some safe limits. So what is the maximum torque I want to exert before stopping? And what's the maximum position that I want to travel to? Instead of getting an error if I held down the retract or extend bit for too long, this will define a window for the axis to move within. It will not have an error if you hold the input or for too long. So now I'm going to store this on my device. Go back to my diagnosis. So you can see the inputs here. I'll turn the motor on. I have an input to retract, an input to extend. Notice I can jog for a short period of time. I can also hold the input down and it will not overextend due to the fixed stop limits. Now we can take a look at analog control. If I go back to parameterization in the record table, I can change record one transition to 40. And for all the analog control types, there's just one record for each control. But now I can edit how this behaves under analog IO. In the PowerPoint included with the archive, I'll dive into more on how to set these parameters for your application. But in this case, I'm able to set an offset voltage where in my potentiometer circuit, I can only get a zero to 10 volt signal. And by having a five volt offset, I can therefore have a minus five to positive five volt window to work within. I'll also want to make sure if I go into my parameter list, 
and I search activation analog, that this parameter is active. By default, it is set inactive to prevent accidental use of the analog input. So now I'm going to store this on my device. For this analog position control, notice the values on the right, how based on my analog input value, this will be from zero to 10, that this set point value will change. Turn the motor on. Now I can demonstrate analog torque. Back to parameterization, record table, record one, I will change to 50. Store on my device. Notice again how after I turn this on, as I increase the analog value, the torque will increase. And then as I dip below five volts, the torque will decrease. Now for the final analog type, I can go back to my record table, change this transition to 60. And this will be analog velocity. During this move, you want to notice on the right how the velocity changes as my value deviates from 5 volts. I'll turn the motor on. I can maintain it slow in one direction, or if I decrease it, I can accelerate. So this will summarize all the six move types that you can achieve with a CMMT drive. Make a note that the analog control types are only applicable for the CMMT-AS. With this type of control, you can utilize very basic PLC code to achieve more advanced functions on a servo that you might not be able to achieve with a simplified motion series or a traditional pneumatic actuator. If you have any questions, please reach out to your local Peso sales representative. We can answer any questions you may have.